Hello, and welcome to another Ouchie's Bat Rap. Today, we play High Frontier. I had joked before the game that there wouldn't be much battling in the report. Those are good times. My brother and I love High Frontier. It is a hard science game about traveling through the inner solar system and developing and deploying scientific payloads to complete different victory point conditions, such as landing a man on Mars and bringing him back home. Since it was just my brother and I, and we are very cutthroat players, we decided to go ahead and play the game all the way out to Titan, see whoever gets a manned mission out there first, and then we count up our victory points. By blind draw, he chose the Chinese, and I got the ESA. His early research is incredibly fruitful as he puts on a spacecraft that's nearly capable of making it all the way to the moon and back on his own, and I've barely got anything going. I am shuffling through all the research cards trying to build something that'll work. The ESA eventually settles on a photon tether arrangement with a nuclear reactor, and in the meantime, China makes it all the way out to the moon, successfully prospecting it and claiming it in the name of the communists. With the cards on the table, the ESA begins restructuring their spacecraft, loading it up with just about everything in the inventory, and squeezing out a very narrow mission profile that allows them to go for the grand prize. They're not going to settle for the moon, they're going to go straight to Mars. The mission profile is in fact so narrow, the ESA has to decommission the craft and leave the robotic rovers there to take care of their new soil on their own. China doesn't take it up very lightly and sends their first colonists to the moon, successfully colonizing it, building a factory, and putting the ESA in an incredibly tight position now that the Chinese have a refueling depot so close to Earth's gravity well. And as a result, the EU and China immediately begin a hostile conflict on Earth and begin shooting at each other openly. The ESA opens up another front against the Chinese by sending a commando team out to the moon to take out their lunar colony and prevent it from being used as a jump start for their Mars operations. They are, however, soundly defeated in the attempt. But because of a custom rule between my brother and I, it is receiving a black chit on the moon so that they don't get to use it anymore for the rest of the game. But they've already built their specialized reactor. They've got their first black card, and as a result, the Chinese are building a large warship called the Wu Bu Zidao. Apologies if I am butchering the Chinese language. Getting your ET factories to produce some of those black cards is incredibly important as the Wu Bu Zidao is now capable of actually making it all the way out to Mars and start prospecting Phobos and Deimos. They're even carrying colonists with them that will land on the planet and put the ESA in an incredibly tight position. Desperate to maintain relevancy, the ESA cobbles together a spacecraft and flings some colonists towards Mars so that they can take up residency where their rovers are desperately holding ground against the Chinese colonists. Once again, for the ESA, this is a one-way trip, while the Wu Bu Zidao fuels up, turns around, and immediately heads back home without an area of concern. Our mission profile's narrowed and Mars colonized, but with neither of us capable of exerting enough military presence to actually dislodge each other from the planet, the war starts grinding to a standstill. It has gone on for about 10 years now, and we are now facing a long-term fight in which we don't see any clear victor anytime soon. The ESA begins cobbling together another spacecraft while the Wu Bu Zidao upgrades and begins ferrying another load of passengers out to Mars. Unable to hold their position, the ESA begins pulling back to the third of the planet that they can actually hold while the Chinese dislodge another set of colonists in the name of peace, obviously. It's about 20 years into the game and the ESA is lagging behind desperately. They're clawing at any kind of advantage that they might be able to get while the Chinese runs circles around them. In a stunning turn of events, the world government shifted over to egalitarianism, mostly as a means to shut down the means in which I am making money. But the ESA finally gets their act together, are able to send more colonists to Mars, and the colony ship crashes making an arrow-breaking maneuver that it poorly planned. 
with war no longer being the pressing concern and egalitarianism ironically robbing the coffers of the ESA into the Chinese space program, the ESA begins building the biggest project that they can. They start building the Orion Project. The Chinese, however, are already beginning on their second phase of expansion and have loaded up the Wubu Zidao with an incredible array of ET factories, but it crashes making the same arrow break maneuver that the French ESA craft did just prior. This is a huge loss for the Chinese space program. They lost their only black card and the card that was making the Wubu Zidao function. They do not have the means on the moon to be able to build this thing anymore. The ESA and China are at parity now, what with the minor exception for China owning most of Mars and the Moon, but this is huge for the ESA because they're now fighting on equal footing. With construction of the Oppenheimer's Hammer underway for many years, most of the bugs have been worked out and it has a mission profile. It can actually get around, it can carry stuff, but unfortunately it's still a bit heavy and funding to get it completely fueled up and out of Earth's gravity well has been shortcoming and hard to get, what with egalitarianism locking up all of ESA's funds. The Chinese space program, however, has been sent into complete disarray with very little ability to even get back to Mars. But the ESA, on the other hand, are looking at completely scrapping the Orion project because they just can't seem to make it work anymore. It requires too much funding too early in the game for it to be able to function as a reliable spacecraft. Meanwhile, the renewed effort from the Chinese space program bears fruit in a solar sailing program that sends a couple astronauts to Venus and the outskirts of the orbit of Mercury. However, he underestimates the amount of thrust needed to land on these planets and doesn't. It's a horrible miscalculation belying the glory days of the Chinese space program. It doesn't down the ESA spirits at all, what with the Oppenheimer hammer now fully debugged, fueled up, ready to go, and an actual warship capable of defending itself, China pushes the government track again, banning nuclear weapons in space and locking up all fuel and future development for the Oppenheimer hammer. With the ESA's back to the wall, they go ahead and set up a mission profile to Mars to deliver the last ET factory that they might be able to, and as a result, it crashes trying to make the same maneuver that claimed the two prior. With the ESA's space program in thorough shambles, the game's called for China. It was going to be an inevitable win for them. They had locked up just about all the avenues out of the solar system and towards Titan. That's been a Ouchie's Bat Rap, and thanks for watching. Most games of High Frontier don't go like that, but I'm glad this one did. It was awesome.